September 12th, uh, rebuke for questioning. God, it seems like we're onto a theme here, right? <laughs> then Eliphaz, the Telamite, replied, would a wise person answer with empty notions or fill their belly, belly with hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words, with speeches that have no value? But you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin promotes your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. You are the first man ever. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth from the hills? Do you listen in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we don't know? What insights do you have that we don't have? The gray haired and the aged are on our side, men even older than your father. God's consolations not, are not enough for you. Words spoken gently to you. Why is your heart carrying you away? And why your eyes flash so that you vent your rage against God? You pour out such words from your mouth. What are mortals that they could be pure or born of women that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, even if the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much less mortals, uh, how much less mortals who are vile and corrupt who drink up evil like water. Listen to me and I'll explain it to you. Let me tell you what I've seen. That's an incredible line. We'll come back to that. Let me, what, let me tell you what I've seen. What the wise have declared, hiding the nothing received from their ancestors to whom alone the land was given, when no foreigners moved among them. All his days the wicked man suffers torment, the ruthless man through all the years stored up for him. Terrifying sounds fill his ears. When all seems well, uh, mar marauders attack him. He despairs of escaping the realm of darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wanders about for food like a vulture. He knows the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish fill him with terror. Troubles overwhelm him like a king poised to attack because he shakes his fist at God and vaunts himself against the Almighty defiantly charging against him with a thick, strong shield. Though his face is covered with fat and his waist bulges with flesh, he will inhabit ruined towns and houses where no one lives, houses crumbling to rubble. He will no longer be rich and his wealth will not endure, nor will his possessions spread over the land. He will not escape the darkness, a flame will wither his shoots, and the breath of God's mouth will carry him away. Let him not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless, for he will get nothing in return. Before his time he will wither, and his branches will not flourish. He will be like a vine stripped of its unripe grapes, like an olive tree shedding its blossoms, for the company of the godless will be barren, and fire will consume the tents of those who love tribes. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb fashions deceit." Then Job replied, this is great. I have heard many things like these. You are miserable comforters, all of you. <laughs> so good. Will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that <clears throat> you keep on arguing? I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you, but my mouth would encourage you comfort from my lips would bring you relief. Yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved. And if I refrain, it does not go away. Surely, God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have shriveled me up and it has become a, a witness. My got, gotness, <clears throat> gauntness, is that how you say that? <laughs> Rises up and testifies against me. God, assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me. My opponent <clears throat> fastens on me uh, his piercing eyes. People open their mouths to jeer at me. They streak, strike my cheek in scorn and unite together against me. God has turned me over to the ungodly and thrown me into the clutches of the wicked. All was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by the neck and crushed me. He has made me his target. 
and his archers surround me. Without pity, he pierces my kidneys and spills my gall on the ground. Again and again, he bursts upon me. He rushes at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin and buried my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Dark shadows ring my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence, and my prayer is pure. Earth, <clears throat> do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend. As my eyes pour out tears to God on behalf of men, he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. Only a few years will pass before I take the path of no return. My spirit is broken. My days are cut short. The grave awaits me. Surely mockers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. Give me, O oh God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? You have closed their minds to understanding. Therefore, you will not let them triumph. If anyone denounces their friends for reward, the eyes of their children will fail. God has made me a byword to everyone, a man in whose face people spit. My eyes have grown dim with grief. My whole frame is but a shadow. The upright are appalled at this. The innocent are aroused against the ungodly. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways and those with clean hands will grow stronger. But come on, all of you, try again. I will not find a wise man among you. My days have passed, my plans are shattered, yet the desires of my heart turn night into day. In the face of the darkness, light is near. If the only home I hope for is the grave, if I spread out my bed in the realm of darkness, if I say to corruption, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother or my sister, where then is my hope? Who can see any hope for me? Will it go down to the gates of death? Will we descend together into the dust? Hmm. Exciting. Very interesting stuff we're reading here, huh? Mm hmm All right. So a couple things that are uh, somewhat noteworthy. So he begins... Uh, making the same kind of accusations that we've seen being made for the last number of chapters from his other friends, his, his pals, who are looking again at this with uh, the lens of deuteronomatic theology, where they're, bless God and he'll bless me, curse God and he'll curse me, uh, or bless God and he'll bless you, curse God and he'll curse you. And that becomes really a lens with which they carry scripture through right up until Jesus's day. And we see that evidenced in the idea that you know, uh, when someone was experiencing uh, blindness, uh, you know, the question was, you know, who sinned? Did this man sin or did his father sin? Obviously, somebody sinned that caused this. And, uh, and Jesus said, yeah, that's not the, that, that's not the issue to you and for you. And it's, uh, it's so uh, interesting. How is, is this guy is making his, his declaratory accusation about why it is that, uh, that Job is experiencing this, he says this, and I think this is great. Listen to me, and I will explain it to you. Let me tell you what I've seen. And, and that's, that's a great phrase because I, I think that's where so many people live today, and, I, and particularly, I think, in our day where they're not necessarily basing uh, what they believe on the truth of Scripture. They're not necessarily basing it on... Uh, you know, what they've, what they've been taught, but what they've experienced. And experience has become the teacher with which so many people anchor their faith or lack of faith, their feelings or their, uh, their determination. It's, it's, this is what, you know what, Job, I, I've seen this over and over again, where people that bless God are blessed and those who curse God are cursed. I can give testimony to that. I can give testimony in my own life. You even see in your own. You're, you're lying because your experience is incongruent with what I've seen and what I've experienced. And so his accusation comes out of this position and place of, I know what's best because I've experienced something. 
What's really dangerous, I think, in, in our day is that, you know, we're watching people that are st stripping away faith from their life because they don't experience God in the way that they think they should, or they, uh, they have an idea of what ought to be and isn't. And uh, because of those two things, they've decided to walk away from faith because we've taught experience as the teacher to a very powerful, poignant place. And, uh, and so I think it's just a, a, great, a great line that's captured in this poem. Other thoughts that you, uh, you took note of? I think it's fun to see, uh, you know, uh, how it was that he responded to this. Um, Linfield, you, uh, you were starting that reading where he, yep. has, uh, he has some things that he, he says. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, you miserable comforts. <laughs> <laughs> right, and as friends, you guys... You guys pretty much suck at this yeah. friendship mm -hmm. business, right? I mean, isn't yeah. that kind of the story? It's like, I've heard many, many things like these. You, mean, you guys, all my friends are telling me this. This is not new news, you know? <laughs> and, and I love this phrase, Will, you're long-winded. I mean, you blowhards, will, my, will these long-winded speeches never end? <laughs> you guys just zip it, you know? It's like... Uh, crazy right right well, and, <clears throat> i'm sorry go ahead uh i was just gonna say and you know he says he, you guys keep on arguing and they're trying to and all of his friends are arguing that job you're the wicked person you're a terrible person because all these things are happening <clears throat> to you and uh and and i like i like job he's like i could speak like that i could talk like that but I'm not I going to. I could fillet you like a couple of fish. I mean, I could lay you out like uh, I could open you up and lay you out like you've been opening me up and laying me out. I could do right. that. Right. But so. but if I did talk, what would I do? Yeah, I'm going to encourage you. That's what I would do. I would encourage you because that's who I am. That's yeah. who I am. I, I see now who you are. <laughs> I could I could fillet you as easily as you're filleting me if the place was reversed. But you know what? That's not who I am. Yeah. That's not how I would talk. It's um, amazing how you see your true friends in hardships. Like, who, who are your true friends? Right. Um, yeah. And it's like, they, <clears throat> you know, we, uh, for me, I'm like ass assuming that these friends were just friends because they got something from, from Job. They didn't give anything to Job. They always are uh, receiving something from Job, and now that's gone away. And so now they're going to say, "Wow, you did something wrong." <laughs> you know. <clears throat> well, and I think the other thing too, Linfield. You know, building on that, it it makes me wonder. Um, you know, to your point, what kind of friends are they? Did they even really know Job? Because you know, based on you know the earlier part of the book. And the description of Job and what a righteous and, and good man he was, you know, that's the description of him. There, you can find no fault in this guy. Yet the, here are these friends that, that are, you know, one by one, they're just laying out all these, you know, the, the blaming and the accusations and things like that. And, um, you know, what, what kind of friend, to your point, Linfield, what kind of friends are they? And are they really even his friends if, they, if that's what they think of him, Right. Yep. <clears throat> I don't know. I struggle because did he have any real friends then? I mean, these friends came and it said they sat with him for seven days before they said anything. So is it their desire to see him restored that they've got to find a reason for him? Yeah, it's a, that's a good question. I mean, it is, is based on their belief structure and system. I mean, they're really seeming like they want his life to turn differently than what it's turning out. And they think they've got this solution, right? And at the same time, you know, I, I just, I, you know, it's, it's either they're not good friends or they're not good at being friends. Right. <laughs> well, they started out strong. I think sitting with someone in ashes for seven days isn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah. But they just it got goes tired south after that. <laughs> they just got tired and crabby, Jenny. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, how many people do you know that it's like, I, you know, I was willing to 
carry with them for a season, but God, their lives are just train wrecks. You know, it's like hard to, it's hard to be in the trenches with somebody for a long time, isn't it? It is, especially when it's just one thing after the other, you know, yeah. it takes an emotional toll. Right. That's one of the reasons Todd is so glad we're part of his life like we are. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just keeping me humble. That's all. Just keeping me humble. <laughs> Here to help. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but look at his prayer here. You know, so he comes back. It's, you know, back to Job's voice. Surely, God, you have worn me out. <laughs> Just, God, you, you, you have worn, you've worn me out. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. You've devastated, you've devastated my whole house. Well, he blames God, right? I mean, and in, in a way, God uh, I think bears the responsibility of opening up his life for the, for the hardship by allowing Satan's uh, impact, right? He gave Satan permission. So, I mean, I can see it from that perspective, but it's really Satan who has done it, this thing to him. Uh, and, uh, and yet he looks at God and says, you have worn me out. You know, I, I love something about that though. And that's just the, the kind of the guttural honesty that with which he prays and talks with God. And I think that mm-hmm. we sometimes, we sometimes uh, sugarcoat our prayers with uh, flowery, flowerly language as if his shoulders couldn't <laughs> hold up to our being really angry at him. Like, Oh no, if I, if I got really mad at God, what would happen? And he'd probably strike me down or, you know, I, I, I can't get mad at God or I'm not permitted to be angry with God. And that's, that really betrays a lack of, uh, of authenticity in relationship. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't seem real to me. I mean, maybe it is. I mean, I suppose Brian never gets mad at you, Jenny, because, you know, I, I mean, I know who you are, but. Remember I'm an angel. (laughs) <laughs> there's always always an exception <laughs> oh, and, and i married and i married one of those too so i never got at, i never <laughs> got at elizabeth so, uh, so she can she can attest to to that so but, but I mean, right i mean i do get mad at her that's the problem is that so I, was satan at one point sorry <laughs> thanks a lot he was an angel no. he was yeah okay and Don, I mean, I mean, you 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 yeah. can't ever have a reason to be mad at Don, can you? You know, I mean, it's, I, get, I get mad because she's too positive all the time. It's like, come on, don't be so positive. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right? I mean, when just... you're in relationships, I mean, I think frustration towards one another is kind of part of it. So, I, I want to share something. Uh, let me ask what happens if I just minimize my screen. What do you see? I see a, light a window. Window. Okay. Well, I'd introduced uh, yesterday uh, Robert Duvall as a <laughs> character, um, and I mentioned one of his prayers that I, I really uh, I loved in film. This is called The Apostle, and the thing that I loved about it is just this guttural honesty in his prayer, and uh, and so I thought I'd play that clip for you. But let's take a look at it. Hashtag my wife that stole my church. That's a temple I built for you. And I'm going to yell at you because I'm mad at you. I can't. Take it. Give me a sign or something. Blow this pain out of me. Give it to me tonight, Lord God, Jehovah. If you won't give me back my wife, give me peace. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Give me peace. Give me peace. I don't know who's been fooling with me. You are the devil. I don't know. And I won't even bring the human into this. He's just a mutt, so I'm not even going to bring him into it. But I'm confused. I'm mad. I love you, Lord. I love you. But I'm mad at you. I am mad at you. So deliver me tonight, Lord. What should I do? Now tell me. Should I lay hands on myself? What should I do? I know I'm a sinner and a once in a while woman. But I'm your servant. Since I was a little boy, you brought me back from the dead. I'm your servant. What should I do? Tell me. I've always called you Jesus. You always called me Sonny. What should I do, Jesus? This is Sonny talking now. All right. You let me down. Hello? Miss Louie, it sounds like you've got a wild man over there carrying on. 
on and hollering and whatever. I'm just, who, who is that over there? Is that your son or who is that? Oh, well, that's, that is my son. That he's, I tell you, ever since he was a little bitty boy, uh -huh. sometimes talks to the Lord and sometimes he yells at the Lord. And tonight he just happens to be yelling at him. Well, could you tell him to talk a little softer or whatever? Because people got to get their sleep in, too. Do you know what time it is? Hello? Now I'm calling you, Jesus. Talk to Sunday. You don't talk to Sunday tonight, it seems like. <laughs> she just laughs that's awesome i think that's pretty fun well i think there's you know there's a, i think a profound lack of knowing how to how do we talk with god how do we engage him in conversation how do we pray you know and i, I think part of the the beauty of what job is doing is job is like god i'm i am mad at you you know, you have let me down. Surely, God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have shriveled me up. <laughs> you know, it's like I read, I read this prayer and I kind of hear that, that tone. It's like guttural and, and real. And I just I think it's just very powerful. Right. And, and I don't think God, I mean, he can definitely handle that. I don't think he minds us telling, because he already knows our heart. Yeah. And so I really don't think he minds us telling uh, telling him, Lord, this is, I don't understand this. I don't, I don't get why I'm going through this right now. Um, but, but here's the thing. You, the thing that Job did is that, okay, Lord, you know, I don't understand why you devastated my household. I don't understand my I've shriveled up and all this stuff has happened to me, but uh I have somebody that's that is my advocate <laughs> that's going to you, God. And so that's the heart behind Job right there. Mm -hmm. If you just yell at God with not saying, Okay, God, I I know that you're in charge. I know that you're loving, um, then it's a that's a problem. <laughs> but uh but I think God God likes it when we when we talk to him, uh, because that's what a real relationship does and say, you know what, I'm, I'm upset with this. I don't understand this. I need help. Mm -hmm. so. Joy uh, had mentioned that she had a pastor who had said it's okay for uh, her to cuss God out. And, you know, here's a, here's an interesting thing. You know, I, I had an experience when I was um, at Treehouse raising support uh, was, was probably, you know, well, close to 30 years ago, I, now it's still just so real. But I was in a, a, a position where I needed to raise my own financial support, and uh, and and I had been pretty successful at raising support. But I went to the office and, to pick up a check, and and for whatever reason, my donors didn't give that a uh, couple of weeks, and maybe it was a month, and whatever it was, the paycheck I got was short and it was significantly short and uh and i was mad and i was embarrassed to go home and tell my wife that we weren't going to have enough money to pay our obligations and uh and so i was i was um anxious and angry and uh and fearful uh and what and in questioning my call and question whether i should be even serving god and and uh, I, I, I went for a drive and I drove down uh, town and uh, wound up walking into a, a Catholic church, which was a habit I'd picked up in San Francisco because a lot of times those Catholic churches leave their doors open and you can go and sit in their sanctuaries and pray. And, and so I went in and I was sitting down in this sanctuary praying and I was looking up and in the Catholic church, uh, different than in a lot of evangelical churches, Jesus is actually on the cross. And I'm, I'm looking up at the cross. I'm like, you know, why don't you come down and help me? You know, I'm, it's like, I'm serving you. I'm doing the best I can for you. And you're just, you know, you're not, you're not showing up. You called me, you asked me to do this. I answered the call and now you've abandoned me. And I was mad. I was really mad. And all of a sudden in the midst of my being mad and talking with God and, and having this conversation, it's like people started trickling into this, into the room. And I'm like, what 
is this all about? You know, and a couple minutes later, a mass broke out. It was like an, an afternoon mass. I had no idea, right? Now I'm, I'm, I'm really put out and, uh, uh, and the, I sat in there and they have communion. And I know enough about the whole story that, I, that I'm not Catholic, so I can't participate in communion. Now I'm, I'm bickering with God about that under my breath, you know. Now I can't even have communion. You know, I'm just mad. And, and, uh, and then the mass ended. It wasn't all that long. I, don't, I, didn't, I should have got up and left. I didn't. I'm curious enough, I guess, to have stayed there. And, and afterwards, the priest kind of beelines right over to me, introduces himself, Father Folletti. Yeah, he goes, I haven't met you. He's got a thick Italian accent. Uh, so I told him who I was, and I, I said, you know, I'm just here. I'm mad at God, and I'm having a conversation. And all of a sudden, this stupid mass breaks out. And uh, he said, well, he goes, me and a few of the padres are having raviolis. We made homemade raviolis, and I've got some beautiful wine from Italy. Why don't you come up and have some wine and some raviolis? You'll feel better. And I said, okay. So I went up to upstairs with him and I ate raviolis and drank red wine and it was awesome. The raviolis were awesome. And uh, anyway, I got enough courage after, uh, after that to go back home. And uh, I walked in my house and I told Elizabeth what had happened. And, and I, I walked in and I said, you know, I, I got to tell you something. She goes, I got to tell you something. So, well, let me go first. Um, and, uh, said, you know, the check was short and I got discouraged and I went and hung out with some priests. And <laughs> she's like, you went and hung out with priests? I'm like, well, yeah, it's a long story, baby. Uh, and she goes, well, you're not going to believe it. Your Aunt Betty sent a check and, it, and the check was for the exact amount that our check was short. And, uh, and she had never once in all of my life sent me money. And she never again, even once, sent me money. And uh, I felt like while I was in there talking with God that there was a couple things I had said that I was really regretting afterwards. One of them was, you know, I, I called him a, a bastard because I, um, you know, I was mad at him. And I, I felt like God just kind of gave me a pat on the back of the head and said, first of all, son, don't talk to me like that. And second of all, I got you. And uh, it was that kind of a combination, like, you know what? I don't know that, you know, talking like that to God is ever a good idea any more than talking to your father is a good idea. And I need to bring that back to my children from time to time. Like, there's a way that I want you to speak to me respectfully. Um, you can be mad at me, but there's a way to be respectful in that. And being disrespectful is never okay. Uh, and if, my, if I'm disrespectful uh, with my words, I think we deserve a little pat on the back of the head, so to speak. Um, but it was an amazing moment where God took care of me in the, in the middle of a very difficult moment and taught me a great deal. So that was a long story. Wow, good one, though. Good story. Yeah. You know, when do you guys get angry with God? <clears throat> well, I got, I know I, I got angry. Um, it was uh, when I was let go, uh, I was displaced from the last church I was at, and I was really upset because I, I didn't understand why. Uh, I just didn't fit their leadership structure, uh, and, uh, and I was really upset, and I, I remember having many walks and just, just saying, okay, God, what, you want me in, you, you say you want me in ministry, but you take away the ministry. I don't understand this. I'd, some really, really uh, good conversations with God, uh, mad at him. And, uh, and I go, you got you to gotta do something miraculous here because uh, I don't know where to go anymore. Um, and I, I remember after, after having those talks, uh, you know, I got a, I got a call from uh, a Brett Richmond, uh, used to work here at the church and and he said, hey, I've gotten your name from quite a few people, and I just want to talk. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so I, uh, I said, fine, let's, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. And so we, we started the conversation up, and, and, uh, and then, you know, it's like, Brainerd, are you joking with me, God? You want me to go to Brainerd? 
I don't think so, God. I think you're joking with me. And I got mad at him for saying, okay, go, you know, I think I'm go to Brainerd. And I'm like, all right, I'm getting punished for some reason here. And, uh, <laughs> and that was, a that was a, a time where I was really upset with God. But then at the end of the summer, uh, it's like I had a new job out here at the Journey North and and, you know, I was like, okay, God, whatever lessons I need to learn, you're disciplining me. But that was, that was 10 years ago. And it wasn't a discipline. It was a huge blessing. And so. Um, yeah. Like Steve yeah. said, turns out that Brainerd may not have been a punishment. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. It was, uh, it was not a punishment. It's like, I have, I have better things for you to do where you're more needed and, uh, and, I just didn't see that at the at the time, um, and I wish I would have would have said, "Okay, God." I wish I would have, have had a little bit more sense of saying, "You know, whatever you need me to do, here it is in your hands." But I think that God was okay with me being a little upset, having some some real emotions, uh, and having a real real conversation with Him uh, because. Um, I mean, I think he loves having conversations with us. So how would you guys describe Job's mood in this moment? I mean, it's, you know, we've been reading now for three days, but it's been, you know, a long time in his, in his experience. He's seen his family and loss and wealth and now sickness and boils. Mm -hmm. How's, what would you, how would you imagine his mood is? I mean, obviously he's not cheerful. Mm -hmm. No, he's a broken man. Mm -hmm. And I think he's, he's got a little disappointment in his tone <laughs> about his friends too. Yeah. It's like, even my friends are against me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm nothing, you know, a little depressed, a little broken. And, and I wonder if at this point things aren't turning a little bit more toward that anger that, you know, are, are, are we going to start to see more of that anger come out as he, as he turns his attention from his friends to God, as, as he gets into his conversation with God, is, is his mood shifting from, you know, maybe questioning or, or disappointment or whatever, but the longer this goes, the more he's going to start shifting this other direction. Todd, what do you think you might respond, or how would you respond in similar or different ways than Job? <laughs> You know, I, that's a great question. I think f for me personally, um, I always tend toward the side of, you know, pro I'd probably side with his friends. Yeah, I, I guess I screwed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be right there with you. You know, I, you guys obviously, be right. obviously <laughs> I did something wrong. I have no idea what it is, but I'm sure I did something wrong. And and I am being, you know, that, that it, what is it, Deuter Deuteronic? Deuteronomatic theology. Deuteronomatic. I think I would be one who would probably fall into that camp, would say, I'm being punished for something here. Mm -hmm. And not that I, not, not because I would consider that to be scriptural, mm -hmm. but that's just my mindset about things. Obviously, I screwed up. Mm -hmm. You know? Jenny, what is your hope in life, and how does that differ from Job's hope? Well, um, my hope in life is my salvation <laughs> so i have eternal life to look forward to this isn't it um but but job's job you know at the end if this was job it's sometimes hard to track when you're reading like that you know he said um who can see any hope for me will it go down to the gates of death you know he doesn't at, at this point in life even death he's not for sure if that holds hope for him He's just hopeless. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, this is what my life is going to be like. I'm going to sit in the dust and rot and just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Just I'll keep reading till I can't anymore. And then life will be over. And even then I'll be <laughs> in pain and misery. You know, my hope is that any short bit of pain and misery I have is over when I die. So, um, and I have glory to look forward to for eternity. So hmm. I'm not for sure if Job's there yet. No, maybe not. Linfield, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> yeah, I would, 
I don't know how I would respond. I'd probably be, I, I tend to go on, on, you know, when it comes to my own life, you know, a little bit more critical about what I do. Like, mm-hmm. oh man, I must've really screwed up. I must've did something really bad. And Amanda pointed out, man, you must have really sinned. Now you're in Aiken. Right? <laughs> You've gone from bad to worse, baby. Yeah, yeah. But but my hope is that I would get to, you know, even though Job was in the depths of despair uh, from from Princess Bride right there, the line, mm-hmm. in the depths of despair. Oh, um, mostly he, dead. Yeah, mostly. He, uh, he said, you know, even now, though, I have a witness in, in heaven. My advocate mm-hmm. is on high. Even now, even through this pain and the suffering, you know, uh, that's what Jesus does for us. Every single day, he's our advocate. He's our intercessor. He's the one that's saying, you know what? Yeah, you need to be punished. Yeah, you are sinful. But I have taken that for you. And I am taking it to the Father. And I'm saying he is innocent because of what I did. And so that's uh, that, to me, is a very humbling thought. It's like, yeah, I can, I'll cry and I'll be upset, but I need to remember that my God, <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's, a, he's, a, he's my advocate, he's my intercessor, mm-hmm. and he's always there for me. Amen. So, John, any final thoughts? No, I, I, it, it's interesting though the number of us who go right to that guilt, that guilty mindset. And, and to your point, Linfield, isn't it great that, that we have been, we have been set free. We do have one who stands in the gap. We do have one who says, even though, yeah, you're guilty, it's going to be as though you're not, because I'm going to take that on. I got the punishment. I'm paying the penalty. Game over. Right. right. Jenny, yeah. will you pray us out today? Lord God, I just thank you so much for this Bible study group. I thank you for the wisdom we have in our pastors. I thank you for the wisdom we share with each other that we've learned uh, through life's experiences. I thank you for the friends we have that sit with us in the ashes and walk through our pain. And uh, even if they do it not perfectly, Lord, that they show up. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to learn from, from Job learn from um, each other how it is to be better friends how it is to live in our salvation and in our redemption that you've given to each one of us and that we would go forward and uh, be better for it and be more willing to sit in the uh, the ashes and the uh, pain uh, that people uh, find themselves in and that we would not make assumptions about why they are there but that we would just show them and point them to you and remind them that you love them. We ask that we could do this uh, better each day and she would bless our day today. We ask this in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, gang, have a great one. Hopefully we'll see you at church this weekend. God bless you guys. Bye. Have a good day. Bye, guys.